Welcome to your B2B score.com. My name is Jason Oliver. I'm going to be your host for the next few minutes here, and we're going to go over the 10 steps of commercial credit management. Uh, as a small business, maybe an LLC, uh, there'll be times when you have to issue credit and it's important to know uh, what the 10 steps of commercial credit management are. The three big bureaus use certain types of data. They use public records, bankruptcy liens, judgments, things like that. Uh, Secretary of State data, uh, length of business, um, and what industry. Credit card data, banking data, loans, payment history. Um, Self-reported commercial trade data, uh, and this comes from the businesses that participate, so they'll report trade data. Uh, personal credit card or credit uh, loans, mortgages, uh, retail credit, and insurance data. So your insurance companies are also sharing information with the big three credit bureaus. So uh, some scores advertise uh, free scores, and it's available uh, for your own business, so you can get one for your own business. Uh, if you want to score on another business besides your business, uh, you're gonna you're gonna pay a fee for that. Uh, costs vary depending on the scores. Uh, you know who who you're going through, whether uh, you know be one of the big three, maybe down in Bradstreet. Um, services require varying levels of participation. So some services require uh, consultation, data gathering, and analysis and you'll be required to report trade information on a regular basis. So uh, some businesses, uh, they have whole positions. People, this is what they do. Uh, uh, it's their job, they're, they're credit managers, and they, uh, they report credit up to the, to the bureau. So there, there can be some added expense to this. Um, the process can be involved, and, uh, and it requires some effort on your part uh, to comply. But there are some gaps in data. Uh, commercial credit management sc scores, they use a lot of data, um, and uh, some will advertise they use up to 800 data points to determine commercial credit scores. It sounds thorough, uh, uh, but it could be limited uh, depending on uh, you know what sector you're in. Uh, score data uh, comes from you know, banks, insurance companies, court records, state filings, and so this is a top-down approach. Some credit bureaus harvest business trade data peer-to-peer, -peer, and we talked a little bit about that. Um, and it can be biased uh, due to the length of effort and expense. You know, so I mean, if you can't afford to participate, then you know, you, they're not getting your data. Okay, which means that when you have an unpaid invoice, the credit bureau doesn't understand that. So uh, you could have a predatory creditor or a, a borrower out there, and uh, you know they'll pay their car payment and their loan payment, their truck payment, you know, for their commercial dually truck, and their house payment and you know their office expenditures and such. But uh, if you are subcontracted, they might not pay you, and there there might maybe no avenue for you to report that. So if, if you can't afford to participate with one of the big bureaus, then your voice is silenced. Unpaid invoices are likely the number one financial pain point of a small business. Businesses will pay their business credit cards and auto loans, mortgages, so on. We talked about that. Uh, unpaid invoices are not consistently monitored and go unnoticed by the big credit bureaus. And that's where the risk lies. So there's online public data solutions. Small businesses are turning to online data uh, such as social media, uh, customer satisfaction and reputation management reports to make commercial credit management determinations. Online reviews are becoming a real popular resource making B2B commercial credit management decisions. It's kind of the wild west of data out there. Uh, it's unmonitored, not regulated. It's decentralized. <clears throat> but you know, much like financial data, scoring models are developed to uh, interpret the data something more useful and reliable. There's a product out there called the BizScore. It provides a free online solution to commercial credit management that leverages B2B and peer-to-peer -peer open source data for credit score models. Uh, since it's peer-to-peer -peer based, it's geared towards small business invoice transactions. The BizScore gives a small business owner the early warning signs that they need to make sound business decisions in today's social media driven economy. So. Um, Let's face it, folks, by the time they stop making their truck payment, it's probably too late for you. What's the 10 steps? Okay, the 10 steps are as follows. First, it starts with getting a credit score. 
Okay, and then, then it's the credit application that's step two. You have to go over your terms and provisions and uh, something else that you might want to look at is a personal guarantee. That would be step four. Step five is the verification and getting an actual credit report if necessary. This just really depends on your business and your business model. Documentation and monitoring. So you want to continue to monitor scores. You want to participate in online reputation, and that's also going to help. Written communications when things go south, and uh, you might even look for a collection agency or professional debt recovery, so that would be step nine. And then um, you want to reevaluate and uh, stay informed. So this kind of goes along with monitoring. Uh, you want to make sure you want to reevaluate the situation every so often and make sure that, that there are um, you know, maybe you, you want to increase credit limits, you know, maybe things have changed, uh, you know, locations, you know, office locations, telephone numbers. So you want to make sure you stay current on your information. So th those are the 10 steps. And so let's go over those 10 steps. So the first here is, uh, you know, of course, the credit score. And I think we kind of covered that already. And next is going to be the credit application. So a credit application allows a small business owner to gain valuable information before issuing credit or services, you know, goods and services. It is recommended that full and complete information be gathered when establishing an account for your business customers. It's easier to get information while the customer is wanting a product or service from you. It's, it's harder to get this information later. It may be difficult to obtain good information after products or services have been delivered. A little due diligence will save you time and money. So there's certain determinations you need to make on your credit application. Who's the customer? You're going to want the customer's name and the business entity information. Names and titles of the officers, which is important. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later, about how they sign contracts, especially when it comes to personal guarantee. Um, sometimes it's better that they don't put down what what their title is, um, especially on a personal guarantee, so mind that. And you also want some references, contact information, you know, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, uh, bank and trade information, you know, creditors. Um, you want to learn if they bounced any checks, if there's any liens or judgments, and you can gather a lot of this information through credit reporting. And uh, you want to understand their credit limits. Uh, whether they're all maxed out or not, okay, and you can also get this through some credit reporting. Um, it might be useful to you. A credit application need not be lengthy and needs to be complete. This is an opportunity to set terms of the agreement. Some important terms to clarify are does the person signing have the proper authority to be signing? Is the information complete and true in provisions in the event of default? So you want to make sure you have written in there collection, attorney fees, interests, interest accelerations. Um, these types of things need to be called out. You might even want to get an initial on those line items. So, And just know that this isn't a complete list of things you should uh, have on your credit application. Everybody's credit application is going to be a little different. And when it comes to terms and provisions, you should probably uh, run this by your attorney to make sure that everything's on the up and up. So everybody has different requirements. The scale of product services, time to complete, and other factors can determine whether uh, or what information is required and the outcome. So be consistent, though. You want to be consistent no matter the size of the transaction. Uh, remember, uh, small jobs can be just as likely to default as a large job, and the cost involved in collecting may be prohibitive. So, uh, you know, if you say, hey, this is just a small job, and I'm just going to uh, go ahead and skip over all this other stuff because, uh, you know, it doesn't matter as much, you know, you, you might find that uh, it'll be a total loss because uh, by the time you send it to a collection agency or, or such, uh, it'll, it'll be a total loss for you. Uh, skipping the credit application process will leave you with very little information to go on and a little to no legal binding to protect yourself when a problem does arise. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, even if you follow the steps, you can still run into issues when dealing with uh, LLCs or limited liability corporations. Uh, a good way to add another layer of protection is through a personal guarantee. And so the personal guarantee is going to be your next step. Uh, personal guarantee. So, so how do we collect a debt from an LLC when the laws make it really difficult for the lender? Uh, the answer is personal guarantees. So companies set up limited liability uh, corporations to limit the liability of the owner. So it, it protects your personal assets. So a company can, um, can have a liability 
and it not reflect uh, directly on the owner's uh, personal uh, assets. So you can sue the company, but you can't sue uh, the owner. And and I tell you, uh, a lot of LLCs kind of bank on that. That it gets kind of abused, and that's kind of the whole reason why we're going through this is because. You know, it is the wild west out there, folks. You know, some of these laws are set up, and they're not—they're not set up to, to protect you. Uh, they're set up to protect limited liability corporations. They're set up to keep lawsuits out of out of courtrooms. Uh, and uh, some of these uh, bad characters out there, bad bad players, uh, will will use uh, the LLC as a tool in order to gain goods and services from you. Uh, without having to pay, knowing uh, good and well uh, that they don't have to pay you. Although personal guarantees don't guarantee payment, it does transfer the responsibility to the business owner and their personal assets in case of a default. When you insist on a personal guarantee, it basically eliminates all the protection the LLC offers to the business owner and puts the business owner on the hook for reimbursement personally. If anything, it'll guarantee you get paid first before other creditors. Uh, this is why it's important to try to get a personal guarantee uh, during the credit application process. Do it during the credit application process. And one key to the success of a personal guarantee is to get it from one of the business owners before you extend any type of credit, whether it be like net 30, net 60, or otherwise. Um, it's best to make this part of your credit application process. Uh, this sets the expectation upfront and will surely reduce, if not eliminate, the collection effort if things should go awry. Also, uh, uh, be sure to get full and complete information. We talked about this earlier, including references and banking information up front. Um, and like I said, we covered that just a little bit earlier. Next, you're gonna have to verify the information. So the big, huge mistake folks do is they get all this information and they don't verify any of it. Uh, they just take their word for it, so you're just asking for punishment. So too often, a customer is going to take the time and the effort to gather all the credit information, including signatures, then makes the mistake of not verifying any of the information received. Verifying all the information as complete, true, and accurate helps build trust and shows the applicant that you follow through with your intent. So, uh, you know, trust me, when folks give their uh, references and you call them, um, your, their references are going to call them and tell them, hey, someone called me for a reference, and they're going to know that you're serious. Pull credit reports. If there's any type of reports available to pull, gather more insight on the small business. Your first instinct is to pull a credit report from one of the major credit bureaus, but there are also other reports available that can give a credit manager some insight to the credibility of a small business. You know, There's online reputation reports available and open source credit reporting available. There's a lot of information out nowadays. Uh, you know, uh, the credit bureaus that are in place today have been in place for since before the internet. Okay, and so now that the internet is available, people really they give their opinions online, and you can gather a lot of information. But it's all over the place, uh, so it's decentralized. So some of these online open source uh, credit reporting and uh, reputation management companies can consolidate that information for you and give you a concise report that helps you kind of make sense of all that noise. So, uh, you know, take advantage, you know, the biz score is, is one that, you know, I, I continue to recommend. They have a great scoring model and uh, you can do some customer satisfaction. They have a network. It's kind of like LinkedIn. Uh, they also uh, manage uh, online reputation. So, uh, you know, they've kind of got all those models covered. Uh, let me see. So they got credit scores for small businesses, uh, business reviews, credit monitoring, credit reports, online reputation reports, business networking, satisfaction surveys, and personal guarantees. So I think I got about all that covered. Things to verify. So call the references. So one of the keys when you call the references is you want to ask how they know the applicant. You don't want to go in and say something like, so you were their landlord, right? Uh, and they'll just say, yes, it just makes it, you know, Believe it or not, some folks put down references and it's just a family member or a friend that they put down there in order to say good things about them. You want actual references. You want to ask how they know the applicant and let them tell you how they know the applicant. Okay, that's really important. 
And you also want to know if they're in good standing. Find out how long they have been in business and verify the contact information with them and ask if there's any additional contact information they can give you. So you want to validate that reference. Um, you want to contact the Secretary of State. Uh, you can go online, uh, any state, type in the two state, the initials for the state, the abbreviation there in SOS will take you right to the Secretary of State. And you want to validate the business entity is in fact legit. Verify the address and determine whether or not they are in good standing. Uh, also, you can uh, verify the owner offices, I'm sorry, the owners and the officers of the company. Determine their credit limits. So uh, this may be a good time to execute on one of them credit reports. Uh, one of the one of the three, you know, to understand if they're overextended. And I'll, I'll tell you, um, online reputation and online credit uh, scores are good for early warning. But let me tell you, if they're in over their heads, one of the three credit bureaus are going to be able to tell you. Uh, and if they're in over their heads, um, it's too late for you. So it might be an opportunity just to go ahead and say thank you for your interest, uh, but we're not going to be doing any business today. You don't want to be uh, becoming their lender by supplying them goods and services so they can uh, meet their financial obligations and then not pay you. It happens all the time, guys. It happens all the time. So uh, other information you want to see if there's any judgments, any liens. Some of this information uh, will help you to determine if you require a deposit. A lot of times it's half down, just depending on what your business model is. You can call trade companies. You can call companies that they have credit lines with and find out if they're uh, no pay, slow pay. What is their relationship like with their current creditors? Uh, you know, if there's been problems, this is a great way to find out. Trust me, if you call and they know who you're calling about, it's probably not a good sign unless it's a real small business. So, um, you, you really want to paint a full picture and get any additional information that uh, you might require to make an informed decision. Check the address. Call the landlord. Uh, be sure they are physically at the location. Verify the phone numbers and the email addresses. Verify how long they have been at the location. So uh, you want to make sure that you know they are where they say they are. Uh, their landlord is willing to be cooperative. Sometimes if the landlord isn't cooperative and doesn't want to give you information, well, there's your sign right there. Uh, check the social reputation sites. We talked a little bit about that, but some other things you can do is check their scores and reviews, but also check their website. Is everything legit? Uh, there's a, 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 a who is, H, I'm sorry, W-H-O-I-S, who is? Look up who is, and it'll tell you who owns that domain, that website domain. It might be something you want to look look at. So, who owns the domain, and um, you want to validate the legitimacy of the website. Uh, you want to make sure it's legit. Check with the bank to verify they have an open account. If there's been any NSFs in the past six months, and that should be information. Uh, they can give you. Check with the owner's information online to see if the information you have matches what is uh, available. So there's a lot of information online today and what information they give you on your credit application should ring true with what other information that you get online. Addresses, phone numbers can be fairly easy to find. Sometimes there's a small fee for this information, usually like a buck, and it's worth getting. And also, you want to know, are they accessible? Can you get the owner on the phone, and are they responding to emails? Test this out. Call the number. See if the owner answers the phone. Send them an email. See if they respond. If they don't respond to you now, they're not going to respond to you later. Just know that. And, and, and just a note, we're all not perfect. And just because everything isn't perfect doesn't mean you can't do business. Just protect yourself. Protect yourself with the personal guarantee and deposits. And you want to ensure that you are the priority and that you get paid first. Provisions in the application can also protect you. If needed, talk to your attorney. Get some legal advice to determine what provisions need to be present in your applications. And just be thorough. Know that if you if you spend the effort up front, if something is go south or something goes wrong, it's going to save you a ton of time and money in the back end. Spend a little time up front, it's going to save you time and money in the back end. And this is what this is all about. This is about protecting your interests, but you want to continue to do business. Credit monitoring and transaction documentation. So uh, it, it might seem obvious, but make sure you're documenting transactions. 
you'd be surprised how often a transaction takes place and it's just not documented properly. Shortcuts are, are taken. Just make sure things are properly documented. You want to make sure when you generate an invoice, get a signature. Make sure that the person who signs for the goods or services is authorized to sign. You want to be certain that all parties are aware of the terms and conditions of the transaction before signing. So sometimes this is a good time to get an initial. Have them initial the terms, net 30, okay? It's really easy to ask for an initial. Some folks will they'll try to take advantage of that and they'll try to push those net terms, making it into a small interest-free loan. One way to ensure that they are aware of it is to get that initial. In some cases, you might ask for a partial payment down, usually half down, and then payment in full within 30 days. If there are penalties, they should be clearly defined if the obligation is not met. The borrower needs to be well aware of what actions will be taken if they default. That includes interest, penalties, legal costs, up to and including collection costs. Collection costs should be defined in your terms and conditions. Credit monitoring. Okay. You know, if there's one thing that's consistent, it's change. And, you know, uh, things change. People leave companies. Companies make bad decisions or worse, companies enter into agreements that go sour beyond their control. So, you know, a lot of times folks, um, you know, they'll, uh, or companies, they'll, they'll, they'll do a credit deal that has nothing to do with you, okay? And they'll put everything they have into it and it'll go south and it'll impact you. So, you know, in any case, credit worthiness can quickly change. It's, e it, it's important to stay informed of, of changes. A change in credit worthiness can put you at risk. The whole purpose of commercial credit management is to reduce risk. So um, why would we jeopardize ourselves now by not paying attention to the road? Pay attention to the companies we have extended credit to. It's why it's important that we monitor the companies that we extend credit to on a regular basis to understand if they've been stressed and may fall short of expectation and I tell you what one of the first places you're gonna see this is online reputation management and online credit scores are gonna be the first indication of any type of stress the, the last person that they're not gonna pay is the bank when you look at their banking credit score from one of the big three that's the last thing that's going to be impacted. The first thing that's going to be impacted is their reputation. You'll find that companies that are stressed and overextending themselves, what they'll try to do is they'll try to gain products and services to leverage at a later date, knowing that they will soon not have the capital to buy goods that they need to run their business in the near future. What they do is they, they'll turn your invoice transaction into a long-term loan. For example, they'll put in an order in for you, You'll send them a product and then they won't pay you, hoping that they can get enough product in, in stock and in inventory so they can sell that over the longer term to, to meet their current obligations and not pay you. It, it, you're the last person who's going to get paid. We want to prevent this from happening by monitoring these companies to get those first indications so we can limit or maybe altogether stop products and services going out the door. Um, you might want to get payment up front if you know that they're struggling. It happens every business, every business one day will shut their doors. You don't want to be part of that, uh, of, the, of, of, that uh, of, of, of that last six months, whatever is going in, in businesses, you know, most startups, I mean, most businesses are going to go under within five years. Understanding how long they've been in business and they try to grow too fast. Uh, so you don't want to be part of, of, of that plan that fails for them. So make sure you keep an eye on the road. And if you see any struggle, if you see any stress, there's your sign to start limiting credit or stopping advances altogether. You know, maybe you want cash up front. So what do you do in credit defaults? So, you know, you've got an open invoice, it's gone, it's, it's net 30, and now 60 days, now 90 days have gone by. You know, you did everything right. You verified all the information. As part of your approval process, you incorporated a personal guarantee, but uh, the account went south and isn't paying. Try to reach out to them, and this is what happens. You try to reach out to them, and they're not returning calls or emails.
Uh, even worse, you know, they're answering the phone, but they're screening their calls and you can't get anyone on the phone to address the bill. So what do you do now? Well, the first thing to do is leverage your online reputation, your customer satisfaction scores. You, you go online, you do an online survey. Companies will go out of their way to keep their reputation in good standing. So that's one of the first things you want to do is look at online reputation. This goes both ways. When you have a great experience, write a nice review and share it. This helps businesses share how awesome they are. You know, you're having you're having good service from this business, and you know they'll they'll respond in kind. Publish a review that highlights some of the um, nice things, some of the the pleasantries that you've had with the business. So other businesses out, know out there that, hey, this is a great uh, company to do business with. Transversely, what we want to do is when we have some difficulties, you want to highlight some of the difficulties you've been having, and you might just get some results. If you give honest feedback, and you have the right to give honest feedback, you'll get the results that you want. Um, Customer uh, satisfaction surveys have been around for a while, and you may have been asked to answer a survey after a customer uh, support call to one of your favorite businesses. So usually it's like, hey, you know, after this call, um, can you can you give a survey? And uh, these results usually are not shared with the customer and, and are designed to improve customer service and satisfaction. And, and this is all internal information. But more recently, um, some online services uh, and blogs uh, provide a forum for honest reviews and feedback that give a, uh, a public-facing uh, uh, opinion. Now, we recommend participating in surveys and forums that provide feedback about your business-to-business -business experiences. It's going to be helpful for you. Online customer satisfaction surveys and reviews are a great way to share our opinions, get valuable input, and get results. Share your great experiences or share an opportunity for improvement. So uh, this goes both ways. All types of feedback are important. And if a business wants to continue to provide the highest level of customer service, a positive feedback lets people know that they're getting, getting it right. And your positive reinforcement will ensure that they continue to provide excellent service. And communicating these areas of opportunity offers a business some valuable feedback. Companies can use this information to make changes to improve overall customer experience and drive customer satisfaction, which you are one. So uh, there is the Customer Review, I'm sorry, the Consumer Review Fairness Act. The Consumer Review Fairness Act provides or protects consumers' ability to share their honest opinions about a business product, service, or conduct in any form and that includes social media. The FTC has tips to help your company comply with the law, and you'll find a link to the Consumer Review Fairness Act in the uh, link below, right? Okay, so they haven't paid their invoice, and you've written a review, you've taken a survey, um, you've done those things, and you're still not getting the results. It's looking kind of bad. You can send some collection demand letters uh, to your delinquent accounts. So before you start a costly recovery effort, try sending delinquent customers demand letters to collect on past due invoices. There are some best practices to follow when sending out some delinquent notices. Don't wait. Start communicating. Keep the communications going. A reminder before the due date is always a good practice. So in some cases, you might send a nice reminder email that, hey, your invoice is due in the next five days and then be persistent after that. You always want to keep it short. Keep it short, you know, keep it typed. Don't do a handwritten letter or anything like that. Uh, and you generally want to include your company's let letterhead. Include the invoices with the payment options, specific dates, and payment methods. Include your contact information. And if you're sending this through mail, a stamped return envelope. Keep it professional and don't use harsh language. You know, sometimes uh, we're driven by emotions, but this is not the time for it. So you just want to make sure it's it's professional and do not use any language that would be deemed unprofessional phone calls and emails are okay as long as you're not harassing them so uh, you know give them a call first uh, if there's some concerns uh, you might be uh, surprised to find out sometimes there's a good legit reason you know life happens and you don't want to sound insensitive to uh, to 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 the work life balance uh, so sometimes a telephone call will, is going to uh, serve you well avoid the temptation of texting or messaging 
just it this is not the time to send a text message okay once you do start sending letters you know send letters about every two weeks apart about 14 days apart at a, at a consistent rate you, you might want to send two to three letters out if you don't get a response uh, then it might be time to hire a professional. So you might want to hire a collection agency. A collection agency is a third-party entity that represents the creditor in a default. So collection agencies are usually licensed in the state of the debtor and carry insurance and are bonded. Individual bill collectors may also require additional licensing. So um, depending on what state you're in. And the purpose of a, collect, a collection agency is to mitigate settlement of bad debts. So oftentimes when communications have broken down and the efforts to collect on a debt stagnates, a collection agency can get faster results and avoid additional legal action. So, you know, the collection agency is the step you take before you hire an attorney. You know, if you have to take them to court and get a judgment, okay but a collection agency might mitigate that for less and it's a lot less complicated many times you just forward you know the all the information you have the personal guarantee the contract uh, the uh, credit application uh, the invoice all your email communications any checks bad checks that you have uh, and any notes that you might have so you send that all over to a collection agency and then and they just take it from there a good collection agency will locate the debtor. So sometimes a, a debtor will skip out um, and leave no forwarding contact information. Uh, a collection agency employs skip tracers. So a skip tracer is an investigator skilled in locating people who don't want to be found. Uh, me personally, I'm, I'm a trained skip tracer and I can find people pretty readily. You'd be surprised what rocks folks can hide under. There are many tricks to the trade, and a good skip tracer will use every legal trick in the book to reconnect to the debtor. And once that debtor is located, negotiations can begin. So a debt collector is going to validate the debt with the um, uh, and establish the intent uh, with the debtor. And, 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 and when, once you get to collections, the person who owns the money is called the debtor, and that's just the term they use. The collector will gather information and verify credit application and personal guarantee documents. The proof of the debt will be communicated to the debtor and demands will be made for payment. This process is very effective in collecting past due invoices and just let it be known that an effective bill collector, uh, it's an art and a science, okay, uh, what these uh, bill collectors do. I have many, many, many years of collections and um, there is, uh, there, it's an art uh, to it. And, and, and there's a bit of a science to it. Uh, you, you just have to leave them to their devices and let them do their job. And you'll find that, you know, a lot of times they're going to be able to collect, uh, not all the time, um, but a lot of the times they're going to be able to collect. Uh, in a lot of cases, the debtor may have some sort of dispute or grievance. This At this time uh, in the negotiation, you know, generally the collector will offer a settlement uh, with some terms that both parties can agree to sometimes there are you know, things so sometimes things go south between the between the uh, creditor and the borrower uh, where they can't feel they don't feel like they can communicate anymore and some sometimes the um, the, the bill collector mitigates uh, and and fosters that communication and, and arrives to a settlement arrangement Collection agencies are going to charge you a fee for their service. Usually it's about 25% and going up from there. A 35% fee is not uncommon, and they can go as high as 50% for some of the older debts. Take home uh, there is that the older the debt gets, the less likely it's going to pay and the more they're going to charge you. More reason why you should act fast. Bill collectors like invoices less than 45 days old. Okay, That's what they want. Uh, 60 days old is okay, but you know when things start getting older and older, um, they're going to charge you more, and it, it takes more effort, and it's less likely to pay. So keep that in mind. So uh, your your collection agency is going to document final arrangements and finalize all communications. Now, what you do after that point is really up to you. You may decide not to do business with them anymore. Some businesses, once they've cleared up the debt, it, you know, we can start doing business again. And lesson learned, you might not extend as much credit. So it just, uh, it just depends. So when's the right time to get the bill collector? 
Once you've exhausted all your efforts to collect a past due invoice, it's time to get the bill collector going. The trick is not to hesitate. You know, just think, you've already spent a lot of, of, of your valuable time trying to collect, and if you're following the process, your chances of collecting are, are not going to improve much past that point. Uh, it's time to get a professional. So, I mean, if you've gone through and you've you've taken the credit application, you've verified everything, you've got the personal guarantee, you've you you validated all their references. If you've done all that, and then you you've sent them delinquency notices, you've you've kept the communication open, you have gone out here and you have you have done uh, social media work, you've given them reviews, um, uh, you've taken surveys that are open source surveys, you've, you've done all of this, chances are you've done everything you possibly can to hold them accountable. Uh, so that is when that is when you get your, your bill collector involved. So uh, how do you select a collection agency? Look, I'm going to make this real short for you. They're all following the same rules. But find someone that you can talk to that gets results and keeps open communication with you. It doesn't charge you too much. Aside from that, they might give you some spiel about how they got some sort of special something going on. But I, I tell you, uh, they don't. Uh, they're all about the same. They're all following the same laws, and they all have the same rules. What's most important is that you have a good rapport with your collection agency. And if done right, uh, they can actually seem just like an extension of your existing company, an extension of your accounts receivables department. Um, they just work really well with you. Uh, some of these niceties are the things that, that you're going to be looking for. Time goes by, you, you, you've done all your due diligence, you, you've got a personal guarantee, you know, you've got your credit app, business is going great, you know, so it's smooth sailing, right? So time to take your eyes off the road. No, don't get caught off guard. Just because you don't have to send them to collections. Uh, you don't want to ever be put in that position. So there's some things that you can do before they go to collections that give you indications if they're struggling. And I think we talked a little bit about this before. Bad things happen when you're not paying attention. Your business is no exception. Opportunities for growth are also missed if you don't have the signals to jump on the opportunity. You want to make sure that you're not missing an opportunity and also that you're not missing a warning sign. So it's, it's important to continue to monitor the health of business partners and have an intimate understanding of what financial direction they are headed. So you want to continue to reevaluate periodically. Maybe this is something that you do quarterly. Um, you want to do some credit monitoring. You want to look at the reviews and you want to take it, the initiative to run a check on, on the business that you partner with on a regular basis. There's a few things that you want to look for. Uh, you want to look for a drop in credit score, bad reviews or late payments, unpaid invoices, change of location, um, not returning phone calls, disconnected phone numbers, uh, neglected websites. Sometimes the websites go south. Unanswered emails, poor quality goods and services. So maybe their quality is going down. That's something you want to look for. Not delivering on, a, on commitment, not current with the secretary state off. And then a collection accounts and other delinquencies. So just keep your eyes on the road. Things change. They're going to change for everybody. There is a life cycle of a business. You know the markets change. There. You know sometimes. I'm, well, I think we can all think of a few companies lately, big ones, that have had the carpet ripped out from underneath of them. So you know, it happens to everybody. Just mind your warning signs, uh, so you don't get caught with a bunch of merchandise out on credit, out on loan, uh, or a bunch of open invoices that aren't paid, and then you get stuck uh, holding the bag, so to speak. There's also an opportunity, when things are working well, to add more value to the situation. Strong partnerships, it's a win-win, and you may find the opportunity to add value with that, when that partner is doing well. So if you're having success with another business, perhaps you want to strengthen the relationship. It's a... It, 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 you don't want your partner just wandering off. You don't want your partner that you're working with this other business to go find a better deal somewhere else. And, and we all need incentives to continue to do business with each other. So you don't want to miss this opportunity to sweeten the deal or say thank you. So when things go right, take that opportunity to make it better you know, for the long term. You go through commercial credit management to establish long-term 
relationships with business partners. Okay. And when things go well, you want to you want to make sure you reinforce that. So things you can do are a positive online review, positive customer satisfaction survey, a thank you note, a thank you gift, a gift card. Maybe you can lower the interest rate if you're charging interest or give them a better price point by lowering lowering the price. You can improve the net terms. You know, maybe this is a time to to reevaluate net terms. You can upgrade your service or your product. You can send them out test products, gimmies, you know, coupons. Give them public recognition. Put an ad in the paper. Maybe this is a radio spot or you make it part of your advertising. Something that you share at a public or a company event. Awards, you can award them. Give them, you know, a placard, a trophy, a way of saying thank you. A nice off-site business gathering. Sometimes it's a luncheon event or maybe even a dinner event. Maybe even just offer some catering. Heck, buy the office lunch. That's always nice. You know, whether it's a way to, you know, it's through the stomach. So, you know, maybe a, maybe a nice tasty meal from one of the higher end catering establishments in your area is the way to go. But there's lots of ways to say thank you and let someone know that they are appreciated and important to the success of you and your business. It's, uh, you know, that's not an exhaustive list. And uh, I'm sure you can think of other ways to say thank you and uh, to let your business partners know that they're valuable to you. As with all relationships, they need to be nurtured and we must not take them for granted. So be sure to take a moment to give thanks to the people in your network because without them, you may not have a business at all. And with that, I'm going to leave you. Uh, thank you for your time, and, and I hope you all the success in the world uh, when it comes to your commercial credit management uh, and, and the growth of your, your business or your small business. I look forward to your comments. Leave a comment. Uh, like and share, right? Subscribe, I think is what you're supposed to say right here. And so thank you guys for your support, and we look forward to providing more informative videos out there for, for all your commercial credit managers out there. Thank you again. Have a nice day. Bye.